Over the last few days, I've been asking myself a lot of questions and had a lot of thoughts whizzing around my head about the kind of photographer I want to be. And thinking, asking myself, do I want to change direction completely about the kind of photographer I want to be? Uh, for the past, well, however long, uh, I've been focusing on travel and on adventure and I've been doing a lot of landscapes, a lot of cityscapes, a lot of street photography but I find that certainly to me with with landscape photography in particular I love landscape photography because I love the outdoors, I love going on hikes, I love really love the mountains so obviously I enjoy photographing that but when I look at landscape photography, uh, a lot of the times it feels a bit empty really. And I think especially with the kind of Instagram generation uh, at the moment, the power and influence that Instagram has, photography has become, it's all about the single images which project uh, a lifestyle and show wonderful places and you look at them you think oh I'd love to be there or I'd love to be living that life but they're they're one of images that people maybe admire for a second if you're lucky as they're scrolling through their feeds incredibly quickly and before you know it not even if that's a great photo that a lot of people have liked it is very quickly forgotten about and it doesn't really have no matter how good the the photograph is it doesn't really have much depth really I don't think and, I, and I'm generalizing here but I think I think that kind of sums up as a generalization that kind of sums up modern photography really uh, certainly mainstream photography and even when I go on Instagram myself I'm bored by it um, I think I need to go through which accounts I follow and really change the accounts I follow but I'm just bored of seeing landscapes on Instagram and the same it's all and there's some amazing photographers on there better photographers than me but it's all a bit same. It's all a bit samey. It's all very, very samey, and it's very difficult to distinguish one photographer to the other, no matter how good they are. I'm just bored of seeing it my myself, and I'm not sure I want to be part of that anymore. Um, as much as I love landscapes and and the outdoors and things. I want my photography to have more meaning and more depth and kind of be a bit more long lasting. But even with landscape photography, I don't just want to take, I don't just want to hike to the top of a mountain at sunset, photograph a nice panoramic scene at sunset and that be it. I want to actually tell a story, tell a story of the hike. Um, the difficulties of getting getting to the summit and that kind of thing. Even when you consider award-winning images, award-winning photographers, I remember going to see the Sony World Photography Awards, uh, the exhibition at Somerset House in London uh, several years ago and all amazing, amazing images but I remember what struck me when I went to see the exhibition. What I noticed was that all of the photos, all of the award-winning images and portfolios, they all told a story. It wasn't that they they went to New York and took a beautiful cityscape at sunset. It wasn't that they went to Santorini or Bali and took a beautiful landscape at sunset or, or anything like that they were photographing people places that you don't normally see 
Uh, they were telling stories that you don't normally hear. Um, bringing awareness to something that you, was new to you. Um, it was all ultimately about story and same with the Travel Photography of the Year Awards. I was a, a finalist uh, at the Travel Photography of the Year Awards last year. But again with that, all of the award winning images, they all won because of the story they told. It's not enough to just be a pretty photo. There needs to be something behind it. There needs to be substance. And I really, really want to start focusing more on that. I think there's two things that, that has spurred this on. One has been, like I say, talking to my friend, uh, discussing photography with my friend. The other has been uh, kind of recent events in America. Early on in the week when there was this uh, Blackout Tuesday movement on Instagram. Now Tuesday, that would normally be the day I would upload my YouTube video. And I had a, a video ready to go out that day. Now when I went on Instagram and saw what was happening and looked into it more, I was like, obviously I don't want to upload my video uh, anymore. So I postponed it. And... I don't normally get involved in social issues or political issues and things on social media. Um, but with this one, I kind of looked more into it and I didn't just want to post a black square because I thought that doesn't actually achieve very much. I have actually, I won't get too much into this in this video because I've, I've uh, on the day I wrote a blog post discussing this so read the blog post if you want to know more about my thoughts on on that blackout tuesday movement um but it did also again wake something up inside of me uh i started looking more into the issue and got more intrigued uh into the into the issue now i used to really be interested in politics and social issues, what was happening in society, social sciences, you know. And then I became very, very apathetic. I'll go into why that was soon. Uh, but I became very apathetic. And I think this Blackout Tuesday, because then I, when Blackout Tuesday happened, I thought, well, I don't just want to post a black square. And I think a lot of times at the moment, People can share a post on social media without actually understanding the context behind it. And then maybe they feel like they've they've done a good deed because they've shared this post, even though they've not really they don't really understand the context or the history or whatever. So I didn't want to just post a black square for that reason. <clears throat> so I looked more into it, and as I looked more into the issue. I became more and more interested in it and then it's kind of I guess woken up inside of me again caring for society and and things and issues now the reason I became apathetic in the first place is because I was in college when I was when I was really interested in politics and social studies uh, I was in college at the time studying media production, which was basically video production. My plan for my final year of the degree, I wanted my distinction to be basically answering the question, can films influence social change? But when I finished my second year of my degree, um, Basically, I wasn't allowed back for my final year. Now, this video is going to be a lot of me talking. It's going to be long enough without me getting into why I failed college. Um, I've made another video where I discuss why I was kicked out of college after two years and not allowed back for my final year. So if you want to know that story, I'll put a link to that video. But basically, I... I felt I was, I was quite harshly treated. I don't think, to this day, I do not think I should have been 
thrown out and not allowed back for my final year. So that really affected me, first of all. The second thing was it was around the same time that um, the Liberal Democrats here in the UK, sorry, I'm going to talk UK politics now. Um, but the Liberal Democrats had just gotten into power with the Conservative government to form the coalition. Now, at that time, I really, I would describe myself as a Liberal Democrat. But when they got into the coalition government with the Conservatives, they basically went against everything that they stood for. For example, they always said they would scrap tuition fees um, as soon as they got into power with the, with the Conservative government. Totally scrapped that. It was always their, it was one of their kind of foundations, yet as soon as they got into power, it was quickly forgotten about. And it was the same with so many things that they apparently stood for. Um, and it was at that time that I realized politics isn't about changing people's lives. Politics is just about getting into power. And then once you've, once you're in power, keeping hold of that power, that's all politics is. So it was because of that realization, it was because of getting kicked out of college at around the same time, which I felt was unfair. That I just became apathetic to things and over time I just kind of just started focusing on myself and just living my life as best as I could and all these things that happen in the world whether it's who's in power who's in government it doesn't really affect my daily life um, and there's no point in me getting kind of emotionally involved in these things because, well, I feel bad saying it now actually, but I guess that's just the way I've, I've felt. And it's not, that I, it's not that I stopped caring. I've always believed in equality, for example, and I do still strongly believe in a lot of things like that, but I don't get emotionally charged about these things anymore. And I just, I guess I just kind of felt like, I don't know, I just started focusing on myself and my own life and let, let other people um, get involved in those debates and things. Again, I feel a bit, <laughs> a bit bad saying that, but that's, that's the truth of the matter. And it was not long after failing college that I then fell in love with photography and that just became my focus. So for the last however many years, my life has just been centered around photography and becoming as as, as good in photography as I can and then trying to build up uh, a career in that. And I fell in love with travel because I then moved down to London and suddenly I had access to all these cheap flights and things. Um, so I fell in love with travel, fell in love with photography, and that just became my focus. But now, through discussing photography with my friend and realizing, yeah, I really want to focus on projects and focus on stories, and then just kind of like getting more interested in, in social um, issues again, through this, through Black, Black Lives Matter, uh, Blackout Tuesday, I've just gotten more interested in in the in the world in the world as a whole and uh, people and society and all the kind of different issues that people go through and things i guess i'm just now uh debating you know what direction do i want to go in as a photographer do i want to continue down the route i have been going down uh, of like travel the outdoors adventure um kind of i guess just trying to inspire people to make the most of life, to enjoy life, um, but essentially focusing on travel and outdoors. Or do I want to change direction and maybe focus a bit more on 
telling people's stories, tell, um, maybe focusing on some social issues perhaps. To me, as much as I love landscape photography, and I'm not gonna give up landscape photography, I will still go out, whatever I decide to do ultimately, I will still go out on hikes because I love the outdoors. I will still do as much landscape photography as I am now. But the photography I wanna be known for, what I wanna be known for as a photographer, I'm not sure, I'm not sure the answer is, is landscape photography. Now, my favorite photographers, the photographers I really admire, Joel Mayritz, Stephen Curry, Alex Webb, those kind of photographers, I mean, they will be remembered. They are, they are the true greats of photography, and they're just, you know, three examples. They are the true greats, and they will be remembered, you know, long after they've passed away and things. Whereas, a lot of these photographers who have massive followings on Instagram and things and take beautiful photos of beautiful places, but they will not be remembered once they stop. When they stop, they will be quickly forgotten about. I'm not knocking any of those photographers, like say most of them are better photographers than me. Um, I'm just saying, I don't think I want to be part of that. I don't think that's the kind of photographer I want to be. I want to be something more like um, an Alex Verb. Uh, I shouldn't. I don't want to compare myself to Alex Verb because he's my favorite photographer. Uh, but you get you you get what I'm trying to say here. Ultimately, I just want my photography to have more of an impact, more of a legacy, and to tell stories essentially so this is my thought process at the moment I'm really having to think now about what direction I go in maybe I can find maybe I can find like a balance between the two um, where I'm still showcasing my passion for the outdoors but at the same time telling stories as well and uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, but it's something I need to give a lot of thought to and I guess the answers will come to me over time. But I'm sorry if this video has been a bit of a mess. Sorry if, you know, my thoughts have been all over the place and kind of thing, but that's how how I'm feeling and I just wanted to to share my thoughts and share where I'm at. So thanks for taking an interest in that. Uh, if you have watched it this far and perhaps it's opened up uh, a debate in your own mind as well I, I, I don't know but I'd love to know your responses to that I'd love to have have a debate on that on that matter but that's where I am anyway with that in mind in my next video I will be back on a hike somewhere doing what I usually do so no no immediate changes anyway and like I say I'm not I'm not going to stop going out on hikes and I'm not going to stop enjoying the outdoors and things because that's just who I am I, I love the outdoors I love getting out and going on adventures so I'm still going to do that uh, anyway enough rambling thank you very much for watching I will be on a hike in my next video so I hope to see you then bye